On this episode of the official Young Hunger podcast, we are joined by one of Northern Ireland's leading UGC creators, having went full-time self-employed with her business in early 2024, whilst also creating lifestyle and travel style content, including hotels and restaurant reviews, and along with her experiences in Belfast. At the young age of 25, she's also in the midst of renovating her first home and documenting the process along the way. And we are honored to be her first podcast debut, featuring the amazingly talented, Amanda Jean Godfrey. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm a UGC creator and I'm super excited to be on the podcast today. So sit back, relax and enjoy the episode. Uh, Amanda, thank you for coming on to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Is your is this your first podcast? It is indeed, yeah. How do you, how do you feel? I'm excited. I'm yeah. nervous, but so, I'm excited to get going. We had Paul on the podcast, I think it was maybe like January or a couple of months yeah. ago. And then I seen, I was looking into his team and seen you were on it. And then ever since, I've sort of like followed your journey for the last like six or seven months. Uh-huh. So I thought, you know what, I want to sort of touch base and have you on and now we're here. Yeah, <laughs> so excited. So what is it you do? You're a, you're a UGC creator? Yeah, so I am a UGC creator and I've been doing that for probably around two years now. Yeah. And then around four months ago, I left my full-time job, which was Life Like Media, yeah. um, to go full-time self-employed as a full-time UGC creator. So. Yeah. How did you sort of, where did the journey begin, I guess? Was that always the goal or how did you? Well, so I started out working in Lifelike. That Lifelike was my first kind of like um, content job. Do you know, before that I was just doing, like I was working at Tesco and then I had like an insolvency job. It was very random. And then it was not what I wanted to do at all though. Yeah. Um, and I got the job in Lifelike as a video editor. So that's what I started like doing, um, just editing videos. And then we sort of like, you know, UGC is still very new. Like, well, it's at the time it was very new. This was like two, three years ago. And um, they were like, Amanda, do you want to try doing a UGC video? And I was like, mm, right, okay. I think I'd edited a few UGC videos. So I sort of knew, knew like the, the basics of it, but I had never made one myself. They're like, do you want to go give it a go? And I was like, <laughs> oh, sure, I'll give it a go. And they're like, oh, this is actually really good. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I can actually do this. <laughs> So then after that, they were just like, you know, give me more and more UGC. I was doing UGC and ed- like video editing kind of at the time. And then after a while, it was just sort of like, I just kept doing the UGC, like pretty much became just the only thing I did that was like full time just doing UGC. Yeah. Um, and then I started doing it on the side as well, like as well as working in life. Like, um, so I was doing UGC as like my full time job. But then I was also doing it like self-employed in my part time sort of job. And then it kind of just took went over and went from there, yeah. See, when you were like in Tesco's or like school and stuff, what was your like dream back then? What was like the... The funny thing is like, I honestly do think my dream was always just to do something to do with like content. Like at the time, UGC didn't exist. So obviously that was not my goal. Yeah. Like I don't, I wouldn't even say like influencing or anything like that was my goal. I always just loved making videos. Like since I was like young, like even <laughs> see if, oh, if you could find the things that I put on YouTube <laughs> whenever I was like, 10. Yeah. I, I, they're probably still up there because I don't even know how to find them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I love that though. It seems like the progression isn't it? But like, I remember yeah. like in, in school, um, we had like a project to do in history and it was like, you had to make, um, you had to make like a poster or something. And I was like, I want to make a video. Yeah. I made this, it was on um, like Windows Movie Maker or something, like on my little like, new, what did you call those? The mini laptops you used to get. Yeah. And it was all film, filmed on the webcam. And I, I like, just loved that. I used to just do things like that all the time. So like mm. I was always making like videos and that kind of thing. So I was like, I want to do this. Like I want to like do this like the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, and then I did media studies and production as a degree in uni. Um, but I, I just didn't know what, what I want. I, I knew I wanted to do it, just didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. So yeah. I knew editing was kind of like the thing I enjoyed the most, like making videos. So I was like, I'll probably, you know, go into editing and then like just started like making my own videos, like just for fun, really. And then um, it was actually just so lucky getting that job in life, like because honestly, I wouldn't have hired me. Like I didn't have any experience. Like, like they they really took a chance there. Yeah. Like thankfully, I feel like off. it paid off. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, like I just had like a few videos in this little like YouTube portfolio, and like I like I knew the guys, like I. Paul and Jack went to my school, oh, did so they? Like, I knew of them sort yeah. of, and um, I'd seen them starting up this thing, and I was like, I want to be a part of that. Like yeah. that looks class. I really want to work for them. Yeah. I sort of always like knew, you know, in the back of my head, I was like, I want to work for them. Like, and then they had like a job up, and I was like, I applied for it and got it. So I was like, yeah. it just went from there really. But yeah, I always sort of knew I wanted to do content of some kind. I just didn't know what, what exactly. Was. Yeah. I feel like the thing that started with me is like when you're doing an ad, like whenever I was watching it on like TikTok and Instagram, it does not feel like an ad at yeah. all. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. nearly like, I don't know what it is you do, but <laughs> yeah. like, it was like entertaining to watch. Do you yeah. know what I mean? 
which just threw me because I was like, whoa, like, yeah, like, how does this girl do this? And then that's why I was like, I needed her on the podcast. That's you know the I mean? thing with UGC though, like you are pretty much trying to make a video that like you, you, you kind of need to fill the audience. Like you don't want them to realize they're watching that. And that's why UGC is working so well because it's not these like professional videos that are like filmed on a camera, like really yeah. like highly edited and that kind of thing. Like obviously there's a lot of work goes into UGC, but people don't realize that. So yeah. like they're watching this video thinking they're just watching like a TikTok of like, a girl talking about you know these vitamins that she's been taking and how good they are yeah um and that's kind of what it is because you're sort of building this trust with them um, you know with the viewer they're like watching this video being like not realizing it's an ad thinking oh well if this girl likes it must actually be legit like this brand must actually be really good and yeah. that's kind of what encourages them to buy so the that's how it works what i really realized is like see like when i speak i feel like i sound like monotone <laughs> but you, you seem like the like <laughs> You, you sound like it's like engaging nearly. Yeah. Do you know what I, mean? I don't know how you do it. That's like, that is something like I do think has really, ha you've had, like, I've had to develop as UG UGC has developed. Yeah. Like, like, well, as I was saying earlier, like the first few videos I made in UGC, like, I cannot watch them back. They are just, they're so cringe. It's like yeah. my voice is just so monotone. Like, I'm just reading the script. And I think at the time I thought I was doing a class job. I was like, I sound amazing here. Yeah. Like I listened to it back and I'm like, what on earth? Yeah. So like, I think like I've really worked on that. Like trying to, the way my, what I always try to do is like, I picture myself like, and this is what I say to any other UGC creator that's like struggling with that. It's like, pretend you're on FaceTime. Your phone is literally, you're on FaceTime to your friend or your sister or whatever, someone you're really comfortable to. And you're like telling them about this product. So like, that's what I sort of tried to do. I'm like talking to my sister and I'm like, oh, I just got, this is unreal. Like, it's actually so good. And like, yeah. try to, obviously you are usually like 99% of the time you're following like a script. Sometimes like the client's giving you the script or I've written it myself, but like you obviously have like very, you know, like you have USPs you need to get across or whatever, but it's just like how you deliver that. Like yeah. you need to be able to like say it in like a really authentic way yeah. that doesn't sound like you're reading a script or you're just like, because people will click off. Like as yeah. soon as you realize you're being sold to, you're out of there. Oh, yeah, you're like, yeah. you're just, I'm not watching it. Like. That's why you need to like, especially like in the hook, like the first three seconds, like you do not want them to think like they're watching an ad. Yeah. Because as soon as you say you, ha if your if your hook is like you have to buy this, they're like, nope. Next. It's thing. an ad. I know. Do you know what I mean? Never so, attention span is like is it three seconds or something. Three seconds is yeah. yeah. You need to get them within the first three seconds to. What well, what's like the process? So if someone or like a brand is like watching this and mm -hmm. seeing you being like, I want to get this girl involved, mm -hmm. whatever it is, how would they go about doing that? And then what would you do as a creator to like? and create an ad essentially yeah so i pretty much um i'm on like all socials that's like the main thing you need to do to be able to like you're like to get for people for brands to find you so um brands either find me through like my instagram twitter TikTok, that kind of thing um, all the socials all socials really yeah um i'm on everything <laughs> and they like usually just get like a dm or an email just saying like love your content like to work together blah 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 I'll usually then ask like a little bit of information about like their brand, their products. So I need to know if like I won't work with a brand unless I actually like the brand. Like you know, I I don't necessarily have to have used it before, but I need to like believe in what they're selling, kind of thing. Yeah. Like I've had a lot of ones recently where I've like I, I do turn brands down. Like I had someone, it was a weight loss support group or something wanting content, and like it was a decent deal they were offering, but I'm like I, I just I don't believe I'm not going to pr promote something that I don't want to be a part of do you know what I mean so yeah. like first of all I'll scope out whether or not I actually want to work with that brand um and then we'll either jump on a call um sometimes brands like to have it depends how busy they are usually whether they can they want to have a call or whatever I like having a call because it's good because you can like you really like get that rapport in yeah you really yeah. get like a good understanding of like what they want like there's no miscommunication then you like lay it all out you know exactly and it builds like a really good relationship between like myself and the client as well like it's a lot more like personable like you get to know them a bit more and it, yeah. it's nice that way so we'll either have a call or they'll just send me like information over email um and then sometimes brands like to give you like a script or a brief usually they'll have a brief of some sort or they'll say i want the video to be this kind of thing or whatever they kind of usually know what they want sometimes they don't sometimes i get like complete free reign which is fun and you can be like come up with whatever you want yeah um what would you rather have I suppose more the free reign i like the free reign but sometimes yeah. it's good the only thing with that is you come up with this great idea, you write a script, you send it over, they're like, oh, no, no, I don't like that. And you're like, all oh, right, well, you told me to do whatever I want, so. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah, so, and then they'll be like, can we do it more like this? I'm like, well, if you hadn't said that, we could have just started with this. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, so like, sometimes it's good when they give you, I like it when they sort of just like, they know kind of what they want, but like, I'm, you know, and they let me just go ahead and do it. But sometimes brands will give you like an exact script, shot list. That's good, because that's so easy. You mm. just 
go with it then. Yeah. Um, so well, if they give me that, then if they give me the, the shot list and the script, then I can just go ahead and start filming. If not, like obviously I'll always do like research into the brand, even if they do give me the, the brief or whatever, but I'll like deep research. Like I, I want to like know this product through and through. Like I'll watch, I'll go on um, like TikTok Creative Center and um, Meta Ads Library, watch like their other ads, get a feel for the brand um, and their competitors too. Like who are they? Like what, what are their competitors making? What kind of content are they making? Like what seems to be performing well? And then I'll go ahead and like write the script or whatever if I need to. Um, and then one thing that like I will never skip is my shot list, like a clear shot list and like exactly to the point, not, you know, the exact shots that I need. I'll always overshoot a little bit, but like- To have that in the bank. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's what like took my content from like average kind of like meh, felt meh. It, it's, not even the, it's not even the difference in my content, it's my time. Because before I was just shooting, I was having like full day shooting one product. Yeah. And I get to the end of the day, I'd have all this content and that, that's great. Like it makes a good video, but like I was spending all day doing it and then my edit takes, double the time, triple the time. Whereas now like, I have, ex I know exactly what shots going in before I even film it. Obviously, you know, you can change it around here and there if you get a better clip. But like, that is one thing like I will never skip now is like once yeah. I've got that, like, you know exactly what you're doing, you just go and film it. And then after that, it's so sim it's simple just putting it all into the edit. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. And then send it over to the client for approval. And then sometimes they'll have like some changes. If not, they'll sign it off. And that's pretty much it from well, my end. Where do you pick up the skills to do that? Is that just something developed over time? Yeah, or? well, I mean, I learned like, Pretty much everything I know about UGC from life, like yeah. um, Paul mainly, like he is a great teacher. Like he taught me a lot. Um, and the thing with UGC is like, it really like, I mean, whenever I started UGC, it was still very new. So like myself and life, like we had to like grow with it. So, which I feel like is something that's like, you know, it's been good for me because I've developed as UGC has developed. So like I've grown with UGC. Yeah. So like, I've seen it change over time and like just develop with it pretty yeah. much. So yeah, like I pretty much learned everything from, from Lifelike and yeah. from Paul and then just like doing my own research. Like whenever I was really starting to get into UGC, like I was like obsessed by it. I was like, I want to be the best. Like I was so determined to be like the top creator. Yeah. So I, I was like looking at everyone, like there's, because every creator has their own socials. So like you can go on to any creator and you, you can, look at all their examples, you can watch all their videos. Like um, there's some really good like agency owners and like creators out there who I would follow. Um, Dara Denny, she has a really good course and we actually did that in life. Like it was really, really beneficial. beneficial. Um, Mike Rama and Savannah Sanchez, they all really good creators to follow. Um, they have like just really good tips and like just teaching how to like become a creator. So yeah, I just pretty much, I learn from everyone else. Like yeah, that's yeah. the only way to learn in UGC. Like mm -hmm. you just have to um, pick up tips here and there from everyone else. And like, yeah. you see some people like doing, you know, you maybe see some like examples from other people and you're like, oh, that's such a good idea. Like I love the style that they've done that in. And the next time maybe take inspiration from that, you know, try to do something kind of similar and um, yeah, kind of yeah. just go from there really. Do you have any like hidden, like secret, like we hacks or tips for like UGC, anything that really works? So if someone was watching this, be like, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, like I said, the I think the FaceTime thing mm. is something that is like a must. Taking my content like to that next level, like that's what really made it feel that bit more authentic. Because people do say like, how do you do that though? Like, how yeah. do you like talk to your camera and like not sound like you're reading a script? Um, and it, it is hard. Yeah. It? Like, you know what I mean? Like it is difficult because I I would normally do my script reads like I'll do a line at a time, so I'll read the line said to the camera read the next and I, like I'll say each one 20 times sometimes to get it right like I'll keep saying it and keep saying it until like it sounds the way I want it to sound and then you have the options when you go to edit sometimes yeah. you'll say something like that sounds good then you go to edit and you're like oh that sounds so weird the way I said that <laughs> yeah so um yeah like the FaceTime thing doing everything multiple times like I'll ne even if I get the script read perfect first time I'll do it again because mm, just, just, have just in case yeah yeah and it's so annoying when you go to like edit it and you're like you've said something wrong like you've just you've just said a word wrong like you don't I don't even know how you do it but you yeah. just say and then you're like oh if I had just done that one more time and then you have to like go back fully get back into the same like setup and same clothes and everything yeah. to refilm just that one line yeah um but yeah like I think and the shot list that would be like my main my main tip to anyone would be like have a really clear um shot list before you go into filming like it's obviously good to have extra b-roll and like um you know 
like extra things when you go to edit but it's not you need to know exactly what you're it's just yeah. there's nothing worse than going to film and being like what am I even filming here? Like you've yeah. got the setup, but you're like, I don't really know what to film. Like you just start doing random things with the product and all, do yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. when you know what you're doing, it just makes it flow so much nicer. Mm. I feel like, like from an outside perspective, looking in, like the work you guys do behind the scenes is absolutely mental, isn't yeah. it? Like, like I, I definitely, didn't, definitely didn't appreciate like seeing that, if you know what I mean? Like yeah. just seeing the finished article and then not knowing it's mad. It, it is a process. Like it's just yeah. like, I think, I mean, that's the, the beauty of UGC. Yeah, it's not yeah. supposed to look like a lot of work went into it. But um, like you're supposed to watch it, think it, feeling like it's someone's just made it for fun kind yeah. of thing, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is a, a lot of work does actually go into it. Yeah. Like it does take quite a long time sometimes to make like just one video. Like you yeah. can sometimes spend the day, do it depends on what the video is. But I have spent like a long time on yeah. like a single video before. Uh, you, you went like, when did you go full time? So you went or? Uh, March, I went full March. time. Yeah, so about uh, four how, months ago. What sort of made you take, I guess, a jump because I know how good life likes probably like the top like you guys yeah. are like up there yeah and what sort of made you take that jump I guess I think like I have I genuinely do think I've always wanted to be self-employed like I've I've always had a wee business going some some sort of like side hustle, side hustle yeah. always since since like as long as I can remember like literally like car boot sales when I was a kid yeah. you know what I mean like <laughs> always I just always loved that and I just loved being like self-employed like I just mm. loved the idea like I had um like a wee gift box business that I started up during COVID that actually did really well. And I very nearly went full time with that because I was working in Tesco at the time. Oh, I hated it. I was no. like, I want to get out. I just, <laughs> like, it wasn't Tesco that I hated. I just hated working. Like, I wanted, I had this, like, desire to just work for myself because, like, it was, like, it was right in front of me. I was like, I could do it. Like, I was making enough money. I was busy enough, but I just didn't trust it enough. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I was like, COVID has made everything weird. That's why, like, this is doing so well. So, like, I didn't. And, like, it probably is best that I didn't take the jump but I probably would have if I had have taken the jump I probably would have figured it out anyway figured it out yeah. but um yeah so I uh just I always knew I wanted to be self-employed and then um I started working for life like absolutely loved working there like it was great um like so many good times like yeah. so many opportunities everything learned so much from it Tommy Fury, um, Tyson yeah Fury, definitely yeah so <laughs> many big things but like I just whenever I started doing the UGC it was pretty much getting to a point where I was making a lot more money in my UGC than I was in my full-time job and it was like I I was only doing that part-time so I was like if I did this full-time what could I be doing yeah and I was burning out so yeah. bad I was like I mean I was working like nine to five coming home and working literally five to one a.m two a.m a lot of the time yeah. and then working all weekend and it was just getting to the point where I, was like, I can't do this anymore like yeah. I, this Born is just not sustainable ends, exactly yeah. like and like don't get me wrong I loved it I love being busy like I was so grateful to be in that position but it was just getting to a point like I was like something has to go yeah. and I obviously didn't want it to be UGC like I didn't want it to be my own thing yeah. um but it was just like taking that leap it was it was that that was scary it's like I knew I wanted to do it but I was like maybe next month maybe if I may have a bigger month next month I'll, I'll leave and then my boyfriend was like to me like when is going to be the right time because you keep saying this every month like maybe next month maybe not. and I was like you're right like when is going to be the right month like or the right time to do it and then was that that sort of eureka moment? Was yeah, I think it was just, I actually, I don't really know. It was just one day I was like, I just can't, I just, I've had enough. I just, yeah. I'm ready now. I just want to do it. And it, it actually was probably very spontaneous. Like I was just sort of like, I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I just made my decision. And I just, I just like spoke to Paul and I was like, I'm going to go out on my own here. And yeah, and like he was, he was so supportive of it though. Like he was like excited for me to go out and do it my, myself. But like, it, that's what you want. Isn't yeah, it? Sort of, I know. Yeah. I was nervous though. Cause I was like. I, saw, I felt bad because yeah. I was like, I love part of the company. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it, I think that was something as well. Obviously, you've got like the f financial like stability and all, which is like scary like, leaving that. And like, obviously, like there's always work there because it was like a nine to five job, and then that's scary too. But it was like the sense of like community that I was gonna miss. Like that's yeah. what I was like really nervous about, like being lonely, because I was like, I love the people that work there. Like I had like we had, oh, just such a good group of people and like yeah. um like so many friends there and like. I think it was like, I was so used to going in every day, seeing these people, like having a laugh, making videos together. And like, I was like, oh, when I got my own, like, I'm just gonna be on my own every day. Like yeah. my, my boyfriend, he works from home too. So like, at least we have each other, <laughs> a blessing and a curse. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like, I think that was the main thing that I was really gonna miss, just having mm. that sense of like belonging, do you know what I mean? Like being yeah. a part of something, which like I really had working there. How, how um, do you, I guess, like, just out of curiosity, like, how do you like have your socials, like your own social now? Like, do, do you like, 
plan like later on the day that like I'll meet my friends here or like oh, yeah. how do you keep that social as- like, um, aspect of like it is hard I, I I am quite guilty for like sometimes I would just find myself working for like a few days in a row and I like I'm working like nine to five and then it gets to five and I'm like oh I'm not done or I could do a bit more so I work late but, at yeah, night yeah and like I noticed like oh god I haven't even seen my family in like yeah. a couple of days like since I moved out like since I moved here like I do notice that um one of my friends one of my best friends Luke he um he also does a lot of like freelance stuff so for a a while there we were like spending like our evenings together so I was going over to his house and we were working together and like that was good I know it was still work but it was like good to just be with a friend you know like spend some time with someone like he got it like he understood so like he because he was doing the same sort of thing um so like that was like that was good for like getting out and you know sometimes we'd go for a coffee and work because I was just when this was like so more so like a few months ago and I was I was like really really like putting everything into it because I was like building it yeah um now I can sort of like take a little bit of a step back but um at the time it was like it was so hard to like prioritize like seeing like my friends and family because it's just like all I wanted to do was work like yeah yeah and like I don't regret it because it got me to where I am like I had to put that time in like people understood like my family get it um but like yeah like they've all been so supportive of it like my sister like she would like she I get her well, yeah she? I get her in all the videos like <laughs> every time they're like do you have like a sister or a friend you can get in I'm like yeah Anna come on <laughs> like she's yeah. great for that but yeah like they've all been like so supportive so like everyone gets it like that I've been so busy but yeah. it is just like I'm a lot better now at taking weekends off yeah. I was not before at all um like you need I, that sort of yeah. something there don't you like but like I was like always working weekends I got to a point where I was like right I have to like at least give myself one day off and if I don't take weekends off then I'll take like Monday off and I'll like go to see my family or like go out with my mum and my sister whatever I like you know go see my friends like I like I purposely try to do that now because you do notice it if you don't especially like when you're self-employed like because you're not going in and seeing like an office of people every day like you do really notice yourself like starting to feel a little bit lonely like obviously like with um my boyfriend Chris like with him working from home like we have each other all the time but like it is nice to still be able to get out and see your friends. Like oh, you have time. to like make time for that, definitely. I feel like, I think it was maybe like 2021, you know when you're sort of getting broke mm-hmm. back into like the office and stuff? Mm-hmm. I feel like there was like three months we worked from home and you feel it like, like the first like month or two you're grand, but then like if you're working from home all the time, yeah. you're like, oh, this is definitely messing me up. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I love it. Like I do, I have always liked like working from home, yeah. but I think it's that, that difference. Like I don't even have anyone to like speak to. Like I'll speak to clients throughout the day here and there, but like, Nobody, sort of, yeah, but yeah like yeah. even if you work from home like whenever I worked for life like you know you're you're like talking to people all day like your your colleagues but like yeah that that is like a big difference when you go self-employed you're just like suddenly by yourself and yeah. it's like oh my god like, <laughs> what do you envision like your own like I guess success on like business going yeah but well, like, like where's 2024 look like what's 2025 yeah like, do, you, do you know it all or? it's it's hard to say with UGC to be honest because like UGC I mean it kind of came out of nowhere and it's like changing so rapidly so like I don't know where UGC is going to be in I don't know where UGC is going to be in six months from now never mind yeah. in a year or two three years from now constantly changing there. exactly yeah, yeah. so I mean I feel like I just have to adapt with it so whatever way it goes I'm going with it do you yeah, know what I mean yeah. so um I think so like I've I just I don't really know exactly where I see it going but I definitely know I want to keep doing this and I yeah. want to like um I want to keep growing with it like obviously one of like things like this like doing like podcast stuff like that yeah. like it's fun like, it's good to do like something a wee bit different, different here world. and there so like whenever like I'm trying to like take all, all the opportunities that are coming you know like yeah um and just really see where it goes like obviously I've like been growing my own socials as well and um, with like my home renovation um content so I've like grown a following on my Instagram and a bit of following on my TikTok too so like I'm getting a bit of work from there as well yeah which is nice so I mean I've got like a couple of different avenues at the minute yeah, so like, I'm just gonna like ride the wave and yeah. see where it goes really T- tell me about the house like you're so young and you guys have got a house and then you're renovating it up how did that all come about like how did the situation arise so we um we've been wanting to buy a house for a few years to be honest like we actually started looking like two or three years ago maybe um, and we both sort of knew we wanted, like we both wanted like a project, we wanted something we could like do up together and like really make it our own. And then it was like last year or no, well, uh, two years ago, we were like, right, let's buy a house. And then we both had like a bit of a moment. We were literally sitting at the table one day and we were like, when we buy this house, like we are tied down. So we were like, oh, should we just go to Australia instead? So we just yeah. let to Australia. <laughs> just three months in Australia. We're like, ah, oh, whatever, we'll come back. Just, yeah. yeah. 
so we just, we just traveled for three months and it, like it was insane but we got back and we're like right let's let's get this house now because we were both still like living with our parents um and we were like we basically just started looking we found a few different houses that like we just really wanted something that like needed work but like we didn't want anything we had to like knock down and restart i mean to be fair we actually near enough like we ended up we had this like knocked walls down and everything in here but yeah um I yeah love, i love the way you guys like document the journey you yeah know, you can see the progression yeah i know yeah. like it's great content in a way, yeah <laughs> see that like i haven't even posted like proper before and after yet like see when you look i like i'll show you some photos <laughs> later like this house whenever it was like when we bought it the difference is yeah. absolutely insane like it, it was just like an old kind of like um an old house with like really old decor like it was very basic it was like this was like a galley kitchen and um, we knocked this wall down like made the big open plan sort of thing but yeah like we we just pretty much decided just to go for it and like i can't take really any credit for it i did the decorating like <laughs> this is all me like yeah. i came up with all this i was gonna say but good. i was not knocking any walls down or like talent <laughs> like yeah. well i did a bit here and there like i definitely did help out like i was like trying to learn but my dad is just like he is incredible at everything like that like he just knows how to do is that what he does is it? no but oh. like he just knows how to do everything why do the dads know that like my dad's he, well he's a painter and decorator oh, so yeah, yeah. but so like that's fine but this man knows how to tile a bathroom he knows how to like he he can do everything he did our floors yeah. he did everything and you're just like i don't know where he gets it from yeah. i honestly don't know how he knows all this stuff but like he's always doing something like he's always like every time he turns around he's like building something in the garden or like whatever so whenever i was like he, he's done this before like he's bought houses and like flipped them so i was like do you wanna, <laughs> if i buy a house will you help me yeah. he's like yeah okay um so he's been so good like i on we could not have done it without him yeah. um and he taught chris everything so, i've seen the thailand video yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> chris is like his wee apprentice it's great like he just like taught him everything like chris is so good now like yeah the things that chris can do now is is crazy like he knows how to do so so much like even like he was in the front room he's like plaster walls and everything like the, this guy knows how to plaster now like it's great but like my dad just taught him everything the two of them have just been like working away like i i came in more when it came to the decorating yeah, then i started yeah. like i was painting and that kind of thing but i've just been there like making tiktoks like yeah, filming yeah. in the background and, like, <laughs> when, when do you finish when's like the have you got a, like completion date i mean we don't time? the completion date was the moving day originally so we we had the goal of moving in we got the house in october yeah um of 2023 and we were like we'll be in by january and then i got to january and we're like oh my god <laughs> no we won't and then it was like okay maybe march yeah. okay maybe april yeah. and then we're like oh we'll be in by may surely <laughs> and then it got to may and we're like we probably could have moved in in may but we were like um we had a holiday at the start of june so we're like let's just wait till the holidays over um wait until we got like our carpets and everything down and like our sofa arrived so we actually had like most things whenever we actually moved in um so in our, in our head that was our completion date so we're like completion is like moving in yeah and then everyone said to us don't move in until the house is finished because you won't get you won't finish it yeah. and we were like no we will like we've been so good like eight months of like constant like work will be grand and yeah. at least when we move in like we'll always be there so we can always do work on it yeah and then we moved in and we were like i can't be bothered anymore this is fine we'll just leave yeah. it like this i know it's like, you need that content. I know, like the ceiling like oh my god like the ceiling still needs painting on here like but we um we are like we, we still are doing stuff it's just not as quick as it was before so i honestly to answer your question we do not have a yeah. completion date probably 2025 at this yeah. rate yeah yeah I, I to be honest i don't know if it ever will be finished because i feel like like this room is pretty much done you go anywhere else in the house and it's like an absolute tip like everything else has so much to do to it yeah um but like once the house is done like then we need to get started in the garden and then there's stuff we want to do in the front garden and then like maybe like want to like do some work to the roof space like yeah. there's so much it'll never be fully finished but i'm hoping like hopefully by like the end of summer yeah. it should be like <laughs> you'll be watching this i know I'm, like, i don't even want to say that out loud because <laughs> i'm gonna like everyone's gonna be sending this being like oh you said it's gonna be ready in the house but like hopefully i'm hoping by around then it'll be like looking it's semi done yeah and it's just like little bits of decor here and there yeah. after that but it's so cool seeing it like actually in person because like i've obviously seen the the content and stuff yeah and like seeing the progression and like whenever it came into the kitchen and stuff it's like whoa like yeah it's cool like it's funny showing people around like my friends and all who have like been seeing all the posts like a lot of people haven't really seen it yeah but they're seeing it on social media and then they come in and they're like oh my god this yeah. is actually so weird seeing it in real life i feel like everyone's seen it online but like actually seeing it in person it's like it's different, it's different yeah yeah we i think we moved in uh, my mum and dad like built a house like 20 years ago oh, yeah. still not finished <laughs> but that's the thing that's what everyone said to me they're like you'll never it'll never be done yeah like, it'll never be done like there's what? just always something more you want to do and then i feel like by the time i get this done i'm gonna be like 
I could probably knock that wall down too. Yeah. You like, you'd be like, you just like start thinking of new things to, yeah. to do. But we tried to do as much, like there was a few things we were like, we put a skylight up there and we were like, um, oh, maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll like do that in time. And we're like, no, do you know what? Let's just do it now. Cause if we don't do it now, we'll never do it. See, once like the room's done, you're not going to want to start cutting holes out of the roof. Yeah. So we're like, let's just do everything like, now and then hopefully that won't happen where we're like 20 years down the line be yeah. like this house is still not finished <laughs> tell me this here you were speaking about a wee bit um, before the podcast started about like criticism and stuff mm-hmm. do you get much of that yeah yeah I, I do like that was something i didn't i didn't expect to get hate on home renovation videos <laughs> it was like i was like this is pretty safe it's not like i'm doing like beauty or anything like that yeah people are ruthless uh, <laughs> are. Like tiktok or like instagram um bit of both like i think i think it's worse on tiktok Oh, no, sorry, worse on Instagram, but TikTok's definitely getting there too. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of the videos, I'm not in a lot of the videos, like a lot of the videos, like my dad and Chris doing, doing the work. Yeah. And like the hate on them. Seriously? Like, I, like I, I don't know, people, people will say anything, like they just do not care. And like, there's a video of um, my dad and Chris tiling the bathroom. I haven't seen it in there. All they put, I think they put two or three tiles on in the video and it's like a Wrong 15 yeah. second video, something being like, my dad, who isn't a tiler, teaching my boyfriend how to tile a bathroom. And <laughs> everyone's like, oh my God, this is done so wrong. Like your bathroom's gonna fall apart. Like saying all these, like, just like constantly, but they're not saying it in a nice way. Like some, there's, they all come with people like, I don't think people are like, I don't think you've done this right. And like, we were like, oh yeah, maybe we're not doing this right. So we went and bought different stuff. We did it properly after that, yeah. which people don't see in the video. Like that video was posted like months ago. And I'm still getting comments to this day being yeah. like, um, like you have done this wrong and like, it's the way they say it. They're just so, so mean. Much venom there, yeah, I'm like, it? why yeah. are you so angry about how we tell my bathroom? Like, you will never even see this bathroom. Yeah. Um. But like, yeah, like there people. I do get like a fair bit of hate. Um. How, my. How, how do you handle it? Like, how do you? Does it get to you mentally, or are you like, nah, like? A little bit. It used to more than it does now. Like, those videos. Like, I mean, how can you be like annoyed at people saying you're telling your bathroom wrong? Like, they're not coming for my appearance or anything. But yeah. I have had. Um, I have a UGC campaign running at the minute with Ariel and I think I've seen that as yeah, well, yeah. The, the comments on that are nasty like are they're they? actually just straight up mean and um, like people saying like oh maybe you should learn to do your makeup first before you um talk about teaching off because the, the ad is basically saying like how you do your laundry yeah and people are just like coming for me like my my looks like and like like said, really oh, going in yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. how did you not know this you're like you're an idiot like how did you not know that you i have to put the pot in first like all these really horrible things and i'm like what is the need to like you, this is an ad as well like these aren't even this isn't even my like my social media like this is an ad and you're commenting calling me an idiot like telling me that like i look bad like it's just so weird like yeah. i just don't know where people find the time to mm. do this like have you ever looked at a video and thought I'm gonna comment on that and tell her how ugly she is or how oh, bad she sounds. They're like, I just, who, who even thinks that way? It blows my mind. But the fact people actually have time to do it is like, yeah. nuts and really like go in. Do I you know. know what I mean? But that's the thing. Like I, it like I always thought like because Chris always said to me like you're so like I don't know how you do that. How do you like take those comments and it doesn't bother you? Because like I've always had like comments on my ads and stuff. And um, like before I started doing my own social media, and like there was the odd one here and there that was like maybe like a little bit mean or like it was rarely about my looks or anything like that it was usually just about the product or the brand which i don't care about because i'm like whatever like <laughs> but it, like these ones were the first ones i think the first day like a few people sent the ad to me they weren't even looking at the comments but people were just sending me the ad being like oh i keep seeing this ad um because it is getting like a serious amount of views so like everyone's seeing it how many um, has it it's well they, they're running like this there's a few different videos and each video has been posted like multiple times and each video has like 10 million views so like crazy, i don't know how many it has like collectively yeah a lot <laughs> too much to think about <laughs> but um yeah like i remember like reading it i actually woke up to it like first thing i looked at my phone was like my uncle had actually sent me and i was like reading the comments and i was like oh my god this is so mean and yeah. i was like because the people were coming for like my looks and all i was like this is different this like actually hurt a little bit yeah but I think that day was genuinely the only day I let it get to me like I was like straight away I was like nah I'm not like letting that bother me like who are these people yeah if you're so yeah like, no. if you're like the sort of person that's commenting on a video like why would I care what you think like yeah. that is just one thing that I've learned through this it's like just do not worry about what other people think especially people that you will never meet you will never know you have no reason to care about like they have no reason to care about me. I don't yeah. know why they, they feel the need to do that, but I 
you do you have to grow thick skin that's but one thing even like through school and stuff did you ever like have that sort of thick skin or is it something you had to like develop i definitely think i've had to develop this really? i don't think i had a thick skin growing no. up like i <laughs> was you know like i was very i saw i'm like I'm, i am a very sensitive person like my boyfriend can tell you like <laughs> the slightest thing and i'm like oh like <laughs> i am like very sensitive so like i don't like the thought like i've i've always sort of been like I don't know like I didn't I don't really like a huge amount of attention like I don't like people talking about me I don't like knowing like I'm you know the center of anyone's conversation that kind of thing so like yeah. whenever I started doing this like I think the weird thing about it was is because I started making ads and then the ads were being posted like I wasn't really like it wasn't going out my own social media do you know what I mean so I wasn't really seeing the comments a lot of the time and then the more I started working with bigger brands and like I started getting like hit with the ads myself and I was like reading the comments that you were a bit like Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I think just over time, like, the past few years, I've just, like, learned. I, I think I did it pretty quickly. I was just, like, I just sort of had to, like, say to myself, like, you need to not worry what these people, they just have to stop caring. Yeah. And that was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. Stop caring. I know. I feel like it's so much easier said than done, isn't it? It really is. But, like, <laughs> I think I got thrown in. I was, yeah. like, right, well, I have to just learn now to, like, not. Because if you let every one of those comments get to you, like, you're going to, like, you're just gonna be so miserable yeah, and you thing. couldn't do this you couldn't do this job if you let that kind of thing bother you i feel like that sort of helps the, the views and stuff yeah it? like you know if like more people comment and no matter yeah, it's good or bad exactly. it sort of helps i actually like i very very rarely reply to the hate comments not i never reply on my ads i was gonna say do you ever reply? not on the ads my chris he sits there sometimes with his phone in hand and being like i'm saying something I'm like just leave it like do not like go that low like just leave it and he like he never will like because i usually stop him before then yeah but um like on my own TikToks when I've had comments, I, I usually, sometimes I delete them. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not having that. Like yeah. it's my video. Like I can do what I want. If, if I don't want that comment in my video, I just get rid of that comment. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but I'm like, I try not to reply to them most of the time, but sometimes I will sort of like, sort of just be like, you know, why? I, I, I would never like say anything nasty back. Do you know what I mean? But I would just sort of be like, like there was someone commenting on one of my videos and he was starting like a thread. Like he was commenting and then people were replying. He was arguing with all these comments, like yeah. really arguing with them. Yeah. And I that just- shows you the type of person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he, he said something like about the video whatever, and I just replied saying, thanks for the engagement. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause you're just like, you're just based on my video, yeah. really? Like I've, I've commented on a few times. I mean, you're just like, well, appreciate the engagement. I know. People are like, why, why would you post this? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Think of the time Cheers they did that. Like, you know, I know. everything you can see online. I know. Like flat out. It's but, wild. But anyway, I sort of want to also touch on like uh, your success mm -hmm. and maybe like how did you actually like achieve it? Is there any like key factors that made you like at this very moment, is there anything that made your success? I think, um, well for me, like I was saying, like I put every hour of the day, of every day into it. Like yeah. it was something, I think if it's, if you want to like, like do something that you if there's something you really really want to do you have to really want it is what i'm trying to say like you have to like has to be something you genuinely love like i really love making videos like i really love like content creation and like you know that kind of thing so and like i just like fell in love with ugc like i love doing it so i was like i really put my all into it um like i you know was going into life like every day i was like absorbing everything i could learn from life like, like everything paul had to teach me i was like taking it all in um then I was like going home and I was watching, like I was joining the webinars. I was like watching all the YouTube videos that people, you know, like all these people, like I said before, like all the courses and stuff. Like I was like just taking in as much as I could um, just to become like the best that I possibly could. Yeah. Um, so I think like that would be like where, you know, I just, I educated myself, you know, like. Yeah, it's like a lifestyle. Made, yeah, I made sure it? like I really knew what I was doing. And yeah. then I like obviously put so much time into it like I really did put like a lot of time into it a lot of hours a lot of long nights like yeah. there was nights I was like working like two and three in the morning then going into work like getting up at seven and going into work like I was tired yeah <laughs> but like it paid off do you know what I mean like it was yeah. worth it in the end um because I, I hear people especially in my end like they start work at nine and finish at half five and that's it yeah and then it's like there's definitely a big difference between I that know. and then like to yourself who's doing the work after exactly in the morning and the evenings as well as work do you know what I mean that is one thing that like I, I thought when I went full-time self-employed, like, finally I'll get to just do a nine-to-five again. Like, it so was not the case. Yeah, it's probably the other end. It's probably, like, it, like nine-to-nine. Yeah, nine. It's so hard to switch off because it's, like, if you don't do the work, you don't make money. Do you know what I mean? If you don't, if, if I'm not, like, posting, if I'm not making videos, like, 
I don't, there's no other, like I'm not getting anything from it. So like yeah. you have to put the work in. Where, where, um, where does the wee like entrepreneur, entrepreneurial like wee streak come from? Like was your mum and dad are like that? Yeah, no. well, like my parents have both owned their own businesses and they've, they've owned like business to get, like they've both owned like, uh, they own bakeries at one point and all like, so yeah. they've like, they've always been like kind of entrepreneurs that way. But um, I don't, yeah, I think I definitely do get it from them. Like, I've, like I said, I've always sort of had that urge to like do it, like from I was like, no age doing like car boot sales or whatever and then like starting up that like we gift box business whenever I was like I think that was it was during COVID anyway so like I started that up and like you know it started doing well and like, you sort of get like a bit of a bug for it you're like oh this this is this is fun like yeah. this is good you, you like something that you built and you grew and seeing it do so well it's like it's kind of addictive you're like yeah. oh I want more of that like yeah. so I think I kind of yeah I definitely do think I've got, got it from them but like um it's just sort of like over the years, like starting to do little things here and there, just waiting for one of them to really catch on. And yeah. like, this is the one that actually really did like were, catch on. I guess, were, were your parents and all supportive whenever you went out? Yeah, yeah, they were so supportive. I think my dad, th like everyone's been so, so supportive about it. My dad was always the one, he was like the, the sensible one being like, you know, like, you know, make sure you've got this amount of money set aside before you leave your job. Like, is this definitely the best thing to do? Like, what about the, you know, could you not keep a day on maybe? Like, in, in, get a job, like a part-time something. Like, he was like, yeah. just thinking that way, like logically, especially because he's done it before. So he knows like the financial, like, like, um, like how stressful it can be that way and everything. So who's there thinking safety, you know what I mean? Like exactly, yeah. And like, I mean, it, it was a bit bold because I bought this house and then we started renovating it which obviously is just like a stupid amount of money coming out every single month yeah um and it was in the middle of that that I left my job so I was like I was like I don't know if this is the right time and then like Chris was like Amanda like you just need to take the plunge like you just need to go for it because there's never going to be a better time the house will be done and then it'll be like you know you've got bills to pay and like it'll never feel safe to do it so you yeah. just have to like take that leap kind of thing yeah um but like, I'm so glad I did it when I did it. Like it, it obviously paid off and like it went well, but I mean, there's still like the risk, you know, you still have that like yeah. fear. Are you like a risk taker, would you say? I, yeah, I would say, so. well, I don't know. In some ways yeah. I'm like, I do like that. Like I, I, I like to take a risk. I like to like- All on, all on black. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do like to like push myself out of my comfort zone, like as much as possible. That's yeah. something I've definitely been doing like more as I've got older. Like I think I was, a, I wasn't really, I was very, played it very safe when I was younger, you know, like, left school, went straight to uni, did did it, what did what you're meant to do kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then like, as I got a bit older, I was like, you know, I'm like, life's just too short. Yeah. I think I did just have like this like epiphany one day where I was like, I, I would, this is like not what I want to do. Like this is, you know, whenever I was like just working in like random jobs, like before I started doing content and all, and I was like, I want my life to be like this. So why do I not just do it? Like. I have this vision of what I want my life to be like. So just do it, like yeah. stop thinking about it. Yeah. And I think that was like such a huge turning point where I was like, these are the things I want. I'm just gonna get them. It's yeah. so like, that's how I live my life now. It's like, I just visualize the things I want. So like whatever it is I want, I'm like, right, I'm gonna do that. I'm just like, it's my life. I'll just do it then. Yeah, do you have like a vision board and all your stuff? Oh yeah. yeah, I'm like, my laptop home screen is just like my vision board. Is like, it, is that something you yourself or is that something like Paul's movie talking um, about? Or? Yeah, Paul always like, was very into that kind of thing. I feel, I feel like he was always very much about like setting goals and that, you know, that sort of stuff. But um, it seems to work because like we've done like 30, 31 episodes. And yeah. Like everyone in their only way talks about like, like vision boards exactly. and like goal setting. Yeah. I think like the only way to like be the best version of yourself is to like set these goals. And like, sometimes my goals are ridiculous. Like I'm like, I'm never going to make that. And then like, I look back at the goals, like before I started life, like I actually, in, in the move, I found one of my old journals that I'd been like writing my goals in. Yeah. And my goal was literally, I had written it a million times in this notebook. Like I will work for life like media. I will work for life. And I'm like, yeah. looking at that now. And I'm like, I've wow. done that now. And I'm like, you know, I've moved on from that. Like that was my goal then. Mm. And like, I had other goals that I've like achieved then. And like, I'm looking at my goals now. Like even when I look back like six months ago, and it was like, I will be full-time self-employed. Like I will be able to be a full-time UGC creator. Like I will be successful. And here you like, are doing it. Yeah. And yeah. like set, like saying like, I will find, like there was, I'd manifested like saying, you know, like I will get this house. I will get like the house, the perfect house for like a good price. And you know, like all these things. And I'm just like reading these journals being like, these things all happen. Like, yeah. because I like, obviously like, it doesn't just magically happen. You have to put the work in for them to happen. Yeah. What's, but, what's like, next on the goals? What's the, any, any big um, things coming up? I don't know. Like I have like, obviously just like my, my UGC goals. Like I have some like dream clients that, you know, like brands I'd like to work with. Um, 
I think the goal is kind of like getting to work with like bigger brands, like just keep going bigger with it. Um, I want to, I want to definitely get more into my, like my own social, um, social media is like, I want to grow them, um, and post more cause, uh, my consistency yeah. has not been great. <laughs> it's just, I've been so busy with like moving into the house and like, it was easier whenever I was like just renovating it. But now that I'm like living in it, I thought Step it would have been easier, but it's actually harder. Yeah. So, um, I definitely want to grow with that and like, um, yeah. like keep going with it, with my socials and. I've got two questions left. Yeah. You'll probably be really glad to know. Okay. But <laughs> this is one we ask on like every podcast, but like you followed your passion. Mm-hmm. How could someone do the same? Oh, I think you just have to honestly just go for it. Like mm. that is literally what, what I did. Like if you've got something, if you want it bad enough, you just have to go out and get it. Like you can't just like sit back and be like, someday I'll do it. Like, which is what I was doing. I was like, yeah. someday I'll work for myself. Someday I'll be self-employed. Like, and then eventually I was just like, Wait, why can't why not just do it now like just just do it like obviously easier said than done but you just have to put the work in yeah. and like you just have to go for it and like if it's it, you know with like content creation especially like you just have to stop caring what other people are saying or what Everything. other people are thinking like that is just the biggest lesson lesson i've ever learned it's like as long like the only people i care about is my close friends and family everyone else i do not care like <laughs> they can say whatever they want like I just it, you just have to stop letting that bother you um and that will hold you back so much if you're like constantly thinking like oh if I post this video like you might have like no followers on TikTok and like if I post this video people are gonna laugh and be like oh that's so weird who's, who's she speaking to like she's yeah. think, acting like she has followers but like who actually cares like if you keep going with it and you're consistent with it and you stick to it like you'll have brands sending you products like you will be what you've been like trying to be all yeah. this time do you know what spotlight I mean? like, effect. You yeah, that? yeah yeah exactly like it really is but like people just don't care you think they do but they don't like yeah. like you, you don't go on your social media and you're like looking at people going like why are they doing that like you just aren't thinking that like you just and it's just because it's your head like you think people care so much more than they do but like i know really in reality they don't yeah, yeah. they just don't so you see like if again this is like something we ask on every podcast but like if a young man or woman came up to you in the street mm-hmm. asking for like advice, either like entrepreneurial or whatever, yeah, what would you say? What would you for best life advice? Um, like honestly, would just be to like, if you want something bad enough, just go for it. Like, mm. life is so short. Like, you can't yeah. like, you can't be like, oh, maybe next year, maybe in ten years, I'll do that. Like, just go for it now. Put the work in now. Like, start literally today. If you start putting the work in like today. Think where you're gonna be in like six weeks, six months, in a year, like ten years from now. Yeah. Like you just have to go for it, like right now, because I like this is whenever I first started UGC, like whenever I first started doing it, like you know, on the side on my own, and it was like I wanted to be like the best. I wanted to do it, like you know, I I knew it was what I wanted, so I was like, let's just start putting the work in right now, and then look at me now in two years' time, like yeah. two years later. No, I, I, you know, I'm closer to where I want to, a lot closer to where I want to be. So like, you just have to start doing it. Yeah. Just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Amanda, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I don't want to take up any more of your time. So what's, what's, what's the plans for the rest of the day? Are you sort of chilling? Are you working? Probably or? do a little bit of work. Yeah. Get back to work. But um, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting us there. Thank you for home. having me. <laughs> um, that has been all from the official Young Hunk. Young Hunger Podcast. Big thank you to Amanda. Go check her out. Where, what's your handles? Um, so my Instagram is Amanda Jane UGC and my TikTok is Amanda Jane G. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's been all, and I'll catch you in the next one.